Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at the ammo changes for patch 14. This is going to be split into two sections. The first one is about the stats on the ammunition which are different and what has changed there and the second section is going to be about access and where these ammos actually lie on the traders so that you can go and buy them. Let's start off with some of the categories with new ammunition. The first one is in 9x21, which is for the SR2M submachine gun and also the shrimp pistol. And this is 7U4 and 7N42. By the way, this information isn't updated on the official wiki as of yet. I'm sure it will be done soon. So this information comes from No Food After Midnight's website, EFT Ammo, because that one is up to date. And so if you want to go and see this yourself, that's where you will find it. These are totally brand new. 7U4 sits a little bit higher than PS with 47 damage and 27 pen, so it's okay. And 7N42 is now the best round in the caliber with 45 damage and 38 pen. Now, interestingly here, you can see that BT has changed quite a lot. This one used to be 63 damage and 39 penetration, and this has now been nerfed a lot to 49 and 32. So it's a significant downgrade to what it was before. 7N42 has basically taken its place with less damage, so the SR2M is now not quite as crazy with BT, but I don't think many people used it with that anyway because it was craft only. So the next one with new ammunition is a brand new caliber for the Sig Spear, which has been added this wipe, and this is 6.8x51 millimeter, and there are two new ammunition types in here, Sig FMJ and Sig Hybrid. Sig FMJ deals 80 damage and has a pen value of 36, so this is really good against class 4 armor, and Sig Hybrid has 72 damage and 47 pen. This is very similar to 7.62 BP, but with a lot more damage. In a vacuum, at least just looking at the statistics, this to me seems extremely good. If you can get your hands on a Sig Spear and some ammunition, you should be killing everybody with it. This might end up being meta, but we're going to have to see how the Sig handles and how it feels in game. So next up we have 9x39, this is for the typical VSS and the Val, but also we've now got some new weapons in this caliber as well, and this has had FMJ added with 75 damage and 17 pen. It does have a small recoil bonus, but I don't think this is really worth taking over SP5 if you can get hold of it. SP5 itself has stayed the same, but a few of the others have had a little bit of a reshuffle. SPP has been brought down slightly, so it's same damage at 68, but the pen of 40 has been changed down to 35. SP6 has been buffed slightly, I don't really know why, but that's gone from 58 damage to 60 and 46 pen to 48, so this is now even more lethal against class 5 armor than it was before. EAB9 has been reshuffled slightly because that used to be better than SP6. SP6 has basically taken its place in penetration terms, and this one has had its damage kept the same at 62, but the penetration has moved from 48 down to 43. This makes the caliber a little bit more even, and so the ordering goes SP5 to SPP to PAB9 to SP6 and then to BP, which was changed a little bit as well, but not much. 60 damage to 58 and 55 pen to 54. This bullet is still extremely good, it doesn't really matter that much. So the next caliber that's changed a lot is actually 545 and we've seen a lot of reshuffling within here so let's just go through it line by line. The HP bullets have gone from 74 damage to 76 and from 12 pen to 9 pen so that doesn't really matter too much. SP has gone from 68 damage to 65 and 13 pen to 15 so again it doesn't make too much difference and PRS has had a damage boost from 60 to 70 and a 1 increase in pen from 12 to 13 too. Where this starts to make a little bit of difference is with US. This has gone from 65 damage to 63, so much of a muchness there, but from 15 to 17 pence. This actually helps it get through the class 2 underlay because we have to remember that we have the new armor system now, so you're not always going to be hitting a plate at, say, class 4. 17 pen is a lot better at getting through class 2 than 15 is, and so this should help its performance a little bit, especially if you're shooting at players not actually directly onto the plates themselves. FMJ has had a little bit of a buff but doesn't really make any difference, one less damage from 56 to 55 and three increase in pen from 21 to 24 but this actually isn't in a sensitive area for penetration, at least according to the old calculations, presuming they still hold and so you'll still go through class 2 no problem. ES has gone from 48 damage to 53 and from 31 pen to 28 so this is roughly the same performance as it was before and PP has gone from 44 damage to 50 which is a big step up but 36 pen to 34. This one is a little bit more sensitive because 36 to 34 takes you from about a 45% chance to pen through class 4 down to about a 30% or 25-ish, roughly something like that. The only benefit here really is that the increased damage means that if you do pen through a class 4 helmet, which as I said is about a quarter of the time now, you will probably kill them with 50 damage rather than 44, which used to not kill people through class 4 helmets. The next two are quite surprising. BP and BT have basically switched places. BP used to be practically the same as PP. It was like one more damage and one more pen. But this has gone from 45 damage to 46 damage and then from 37 pen to 45 pen. This is a lot. 
545 BP is now much more similar to M855A1 in the 556 category than it ever used to be and it has leapfrogged a lot over BT which used to be 42 and 42 but is now 48 damage and 37 pen instead. These two have effectively swapped places and I think the overall calibre is much stronger for it. Having a 48 damage bullet with 37 pen in BT is much better than it used to be. There's also been some minor tweaks to the top end bullets, so 7M40 kept its damage at 52 but the pen has gone down slightly from 44 to 42 and also the recoil is only minus 10 now from minus 20 so it's not quite as recoil reducing as it was before. The S has moved up from 40 damage to 43 and 52 pen to 54 so this is actually really good now. I think this is significantly better than a Golnik in this state because a Golnik didn't get changed and is still 37 damage which is just extremely low. So on to 556, HP got a small tweak from 8 to 7, so much of a muchness. Mark 255 mod ORRLP went from 63 damage to 72 and 18 pen down to 11. People are still probably not going to use this bullet, so I don't think this makes any difference. Mark 318 mod OSOST, on the other hand, went from 69 damage to 55, but from 20 pen to 33, so this is much more capable against class 4 armor now. M856 went from 59 damage to 64 and 23 pen down to 18 so again I don't think this one's going to be used and very similar for FMJ even though the damage has gone from 54 to 59 the pen is still 23 so it's just a bit low. M855 has had a buff from 53 damage to 57 and 30 pen to 31 so this is actually quite a good start around now and M856A1 has been tweaked a little bit from 54 damage to 52 and from 37 pen to 38. I don't think this makes too much difference because two shots from this up at 104 damage with 38 pen will probably still kill somebody through class 4 to the chest but I'm going to go and have to check. There was also a tiny little tweak to the top end bullets within 762 by 39 with MAI AP getting one extra damage from 46 to 47. So in terms of progression, I've gone through a couple of the typical calibers and a few of the very well used bullets to see. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything, but you'll get the idea as we go through. A lot of the ammunition has been pushed much further into the traders and some of it is missing entirely. So again, we're going to have to play and see exactly where things land behind quests, but it's going to be interesting. So in 9x19, PST and M882 are both on Peacekeeper 2. AP 6.3 is on Peacekeeper 3 and 9mm rip is actually completely gone from the traders. Unsurprisingly, PvP is also not there, this is probably craft only. Into 556, M855 is Peacekeeper 3, so this is really, really high. The next one up, SOST now, because this is the one with 33 pen, remember, that's actually not there at all, so I think it's available on the flea, but just not from the traders. M856A1 is now on Peacekeeper 4, and M855A1 is gone completely. This is very different to Last Wipe, where we had that on Peacekeeper 3 because of the short wipe, but it does look like they're trying to push out a lot of these ammos because of the changes to the armor system. 545 PS is now on Prapple 3. 545 BT, you can actually get access to it on Prapple 2 through a barter or buying it directly on Prapple 4. 7 and 40, interestingly, is now on Prapple 4. This was the unicorn round you couldn't get access to, but just be mindful of the limited amount that you can purchase. And very intriguingly, 545 PP, BP, BS, and a Golnik are all not available on the traders. The most interesting one being that PP and BP are just not there at all. In 762 NATO, BCP is Jaeger 3 and M80 is Questlock, so it's kind of hard to know where these come in the progression at the moment. M62 is on Peacekeeper 4 and M61 is now gone completely, so I guess that the unlock behind Shootborn in Heaven has been removed. 762 by 39 for the AKMs. T45M is now on Prepple 3, which is pretty high. 762 PS is quest locked. PP is on level 4 traders, and BP is gone entirely this way. As for 762 by 54R for the Mosin, HP and SP are on Jaeger and Skier at level 1, but everything other than that is on Prepple 2 or above. So FMJ is on Prepple 2, T46M is on Prepple 3, PS is quest locked, and BT is on Prepple 4. 300 Blackout, we have CBJ on Peacekeeper 4, this is for the MCX, and the AP ammo is still not on the traders, I don't know whether it's been put back into crafting yet, so we're going to have to see, but you can't buy them from the traders at least. Point 45, Match FMJ is Peacekeeper 2, 45 AP is on Peacekeeper 4, so you don't have to craft this anymore, and 45 RIP is behind a quest. A couple of other assorted SMG bullets, L191 is behind Peacekeeper 3, this is for the P90, SS190 is now repurchasable on Peacekeeper 4, which is good. For the MP7, Subsonic SX is still behind Mechanic 2, FMJ SX is behind a quest, and AP SX is not purchasable as you would probably expect. Then the last couple of random ones, PS12B for the Ash 12 is actually on Prapple 4 interestingly. Flechette for 12 gauge shotguns is gone from the traders and that has been replaced with Piranha. This always made sense, the fact that you could buy Flechette and you had to craft Piranha made no sense at all. Piranha's now on Jaeger 2. Magnum Buckshot interestingly is Jaeger 3, I mean this is a really scary one with the armor plate so mm, fair enough. APM is gone completely. You used to be able to buy this from the traders on Mechanic, but now this is gone. Probably this is craft only, but we're going to have to see. 
And the final two, the new bullets, SIG FMJ and SIG Hybrid. These are actually purchasable on Peacekeeper 3 and Peacekeeper 4, which seems kind of insane to me. They don't actually cost that much, about 500 rubles and 1,000 rubles, maybe a little bit more, but this seems really good. These ammos are extremely, extremely powerful. They've got really high pen and really high damage, so watch out for these. These might end up getting nerfed, so maybe make a little stockpile if you get there early enough. One final thing before we go, we have a new album launching in partnership with Low Wave Records called Phoenix, which is now available on Spotify using the links down in the description below. This is all completely copyright free, so if you are a content creator, you can use this in your streams, no problem. And it does help to support the channel. Basically the exact same method as YouTube. You watch the stuff and the channel gets paid for people listening to the music. It's the same kind of thing. So if you want to go and listen to that to go and help the channel and you like the music, then it's a win-win for everybody. If you did want to use the music in any of your content, just make sure that you credit it so that people know where to find it. But otherwise, it was made for me and for the community to use free of charge. So as always, a big shout out to all my patrons and have fun in your raids.